In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add an image texture to a sphere so that there's no crazy amount of distortions, whether you use a tennis ball texture, a ball texture, a basketball texture, or the freaking planet. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Oh, and one final tip, if you've got your, sphere, uh, your cube here that you've added a subdivision surface modifier to, if you're in object mode, you can press Shift Alt S and you can pull this all the way back until your sphere in the top left corner shows one. And then it deforms into a perfect sphere that is perfectly quad and the distortions are minimum, which is probably the best way to go about this. Cool, let's get into it. The first thing you want to do is go into Google, type in soccer ball image texture 3D model, or if you want to do it with a tennis ball, basketball, golf texture, do it. The only thing with the soccer ball texture that you need to keep in mind because it's a very interesting pattern is that when you take a plane and you try and uh, crinkle it up into a sphere, on the poles there tends to be a little bit of um, compression where it, it might look funny. That's why you want to use an image texture like this. That being said, when we demonstrate changing your soccer ball to your tennis ball texture, your uh, basketball texture, or well, we probably won't do the golf ball texture, you're welcome to, you'll notice that it's interchangeable and it doesn't matter. In fact, uh, back in January, I demonstrated how to make, add an image texture to a, a plane and then convert the plane to a perfect sphere. We will cover that method, but we will also go over how to do it with a triangled sphere also known as an icosphere, a UV sphere, which is quads, which is the best type of sphere. Um, we'll use a, also do it with a cube where we can make the perfect sphere out of the cube, which is uh, probably the best method. And then finally, the easiest method is using a plane. Right, so the first thing you want to do is go into Blender, and once you're in Blender, and I'm pad one, uh, you can press Shift A and you can add a plane, cube, UV sphere and icosphere into your scene. And then once you've done that, you can lift this up over here and you can change to your shader editor. Once you've done that, the next thing you wanna do is go to edit preference. If you're new to the channel, uh, you wanna to go to your add-ons and search for node Wrangler and make sure that this is enabled. Uh, just as a default for any videos that I make, it's, it's a big help. It's free, it's already there, you just need to enable it. Once you've done that, um, let's get started. So we'll start off with the, with the plane. Now there's a few modifications we need to do here before we continue, but before we even do that, let's add the image textures and then we'll form everything correctly. So actually let's start over here with, with this one here. So now that we've got this over here, uh, you can press Shift A, well you can you can just click over here to add an image texture, hold on, delete this, press new, and add an image texture, and change to your material viewport so you can see what is going on. Currently it's white because that's the base color, and we want to change that to an image texture by pressing Shift A search and we'll type in image texture. Once you've done that, we'll connect that to the base color and you'll notice that it is currently black. And it's black because we actually, we can, it can read that it's supposed to see an image texture, but it, we don't, it hasn't got any image texture to, to pull from. So those images that you've downloaded, find them and we're gonna select one of them. I'm gonna use the soccer ball initially and then we'll interchange between all of them. Actually, no, let's use the tennis ball. We'll use the soccer ball at the end. So let's use the tennis ball quickly. Currently, when you import the tennis ball, you'll notice that it doesn't look right like a tennis ball. Even if you shade this smooth, it still looks a bit funky because of this line over here. The lining is bad. So how do we fix that? Now, if you have no Wrangler installed, you can click on this and press Control T for Tiger and uh, then we've got this now there's a few things you want to do yeah you want to connect to generated and then you want to change your linear to smart and you want to change your flat to sphere and just like that that is looking sick so we'll leave that as is and we'll mess with that later the next way is the way I've showed you before a little bit more tricky a few more steps but also I think quite simple because you're yeah, adding an image texture to a plane. So we'll press new, shift A, search, type in image texture, add the to, to, to the base color, press open, find the image texture you want to use. I'm going to use a tennis ball for all of them and then I'll change between all of them thereafter. 
Um, so we've got this here, and once again, we can press, uh, there's a few things we need to change here. So first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the x-axis is twice the size of the y-axis. So I'm going to put that on 4, 4 and 2. That's perfect. Then we want to go to our modify properties for non-destructive modeling and press add a subdivision surface modifier. Keep it on simple, ramp it up to 6. You can do more if you like, but 6 is more than enough. Um, and then we're going to add a simple deform, click bend, and um, I'm going to press numpad 1 for front orthographic view and to minimize. I'm going to press shift A and we're going to add an empty to the scene as a reference point. Once you've done that, we'll click on our pane again and we'll use the empty. And uh, we will make this, let's try 180 and make this uh, one sec. So we're going to try 180. make this X and then we're going to duplicate this and then we're going to make this 360 we're going to make it Z and currently when we look at this that doesn't look like a sphere to me so the way we fix that we select our empty we press N for the menu to appear and we just change our rotation of our X axis to 90 degrees and boom just like that we have a perfect sphere we can also shh, we can also uh, ooh, what I mean, select that, shade that smooth, and once again, you do see a little bit of clipping at the at the ends here, yeah, where the image is squished together, but it's still a pretty damn good result, very clean and crisp. All right, so and you're always welcome to add an additional subdivision at the, uh, at the end. Um, you can add it after the deforms. Actually, it actually doesn't shouldn't make much of a difference, but that's looking good. I'm just going to add a subdivision surface here. You don't have to do this, your computer might die. So I'm just showing you they all can look pretty good and smooth. Right, so now that we've got our traditional icosphere that most people would opt to use when it comes to this, we're going to press New. We're going to press Shift A Image Texture. We'll connect our image texture to our base color and we'll press Open and we will find that image texture. And off the bat, it imports perfectly as is. You think, wow, that's a major time saver, but we will get to, to this later when we add different image textures. Um, right, and then finally, which I think is the best way to go about this for the perfect sphere, is to use a cube. There's no better sphere than a cube. So we're gonna press Shift A, type in image texture, and we will connect this. Well, the, well, we could rotate this and stuff, and I'm not going to do that right now. I don't want to add unnecessary steps that creates confusion. Right, so now we can just add this into the scene, and look at that. Now, isn't that looking lovely? Well, I think it does. Press numpad 1, and uh, right. Next thing we want to do is just remove that, and I'm going to click on Smart, I'm going to click on Sphere, I'm going to add a modifier, which would be a subdivision surface modifier, keep it on uh, Catmull Clock, let's ramp this up to 6, press Ctrl T, and I'm going to change this to Generated. And just like that, that's looking pretty sweet if you ask me. And obviously you, we could mess with this also by pressing Control T, changing this to generated. But if you do, that doesn't look right. So leave it on UV sphere. And then you can always just say, I don't like where this line is. I want it to be facing in a different direction. So you can just uh, mess with the rotation. Hold on. Zero. One sec. You can just change this to Smart Sphere and uh, connect this to Generate, and then it will be facing in the same direction. And over here, I guess we could press Control T. We don't need to mess with everything because it's perfect using the UV, but if we change to Generate, change to Smart, 
Now, flat does make sense, but let's use sphere. It will get messed up because we're using a simple plane. That's why we will use flat here. If we select this over here and we change this to box, we might get something crazy. 0 0.2. Nope. So let's stick to what we know that works. Now, another thing that you might have come across, well, let's first change the images just so that you can see that it always works. So all we need to do is select a different image. So if we choose a soccer ball, the soccer ball looks flawless. If we choose basketball, now the basketball doesn't look flawless because the texture image isn't great on that one. Let's use this one. There we go. That's a full texture image of a basketball. That looks flawless. No bleeding anywhere. Lines aren't distorted at all. And uh, yeah, so I showed you tennis ball, soccer ball, basketball. They all seem to work. And it doesn't matter which one you decide to use. It will always look okay, which is great. And uh, right, now the next thing you might have come across is your UV edi editor. So let's select this basketball, press numpad one, press tab to go into edit mode. And currently this is what it sees. It's using all of this information here to form what we see in front of us. And it, somehow it works. But if you wanted to mess with this, which I don't recommend because I've just showed you how to do it, uh, you might decide to, um, actually I really recommend you don't mess with this. You might decide to select all by pressing A by hovering your mouse in the UV editor, pressing A, then typing U, and you can say Smart UV Unwrap, and you can choose 66 degrees. You'll get something that still looks pretty good. Or you might decide U, and you can just look at the different options, and it will mess with the distortion of, of the image. Um, it doesn't seem to be working now, and the reason being what isn't messing up the scene, if you're wondering, if we go back to our shader editor, currently we're not using the UVs, we're using random generated, but if we connected this, this is the mess that we would have right now. And that would be more in line with the UV editor. Uh, press A, so if we press, let's try again, press U, smart UV unwrap, boom. See, this is more, what I was expecting but uh, I think you get the idea we're not going to dive into the UV editor there's been some big updates in Blender 3.1 but I think I have shown you enough on how to add textures to a sphere perfectly please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one and I hope I'll answer that question for that one subscriber who asked